So this is the U2725QE from Dell, arguably one of the most popular monitors right now because of its features. 4K, 120 Hertz, one cable USB-C laptop connectivity with 140 watts power output and a full on Thunderbolt 4 dock built into it. And of course, excellent color accuracy and a KVM switch. And in this video, I want to cover a few things that you should know before you buy it. Because although in my initial review on the U2725QE, which you should watch and I will link down below, there have been a few things that have popped up since then and also some things that I just wanna go into more detail on. So let's just get into it. And by the way, if there's anything that I don't specifically mention or talk about in this video, it's because I've already covered it in my full review. Now you may have seen some people complaining about excessive or loud coil whine on the U2725QE, where the coil whine is noticeably audible even sitting, you know, an arm's length away from the monitor. It's kind of like a high-pitched buzzing noise coming out of the monitor. Uh, there have been a few comments on my YouTube review from people saying that they have experienced coil whine on their unit and also a few on Amazon reviews and also on Reddit. Now I can only tell you my personal experience. Uh, I've been buying these ultra sharp monitors from Dell since about 2016. I've never experienced any coil wind issues. Now my U2725QE, uh, which is the model that people are specifically having issues with, is dead quiet. Even when I put my ear, you know, right next to the top fence. Now I tried to recreate the coil wind issue by pushing my 16 inch N2 Max MacBook Pro to the limit rendering videos and other intensive 3D tasks like that, uh, which is about as demanding as you can get on these laptops because it can suck up over 100 watts of power just on its own. And I also had other accessories attached and drawing power from the monitor, uh, like a microphone and keyboard, etc. Still, I couldn't hear anything at all. No coil whine or anything like that. Uh, that being said, I did spend some time researching this issue and there are too many anecdotes from people experiencing coil whine to ignore. So I think there is some validity to the issue, uh, potentially with some of the built-in power supplies, but I don't think it's widespread. Uh, there are plenty of people like me who have zero issues. It just sounds like there's maybe a few dud units going around. Uh, maybe Dell has even quietly fixed it on newer models by the time you're watching this video. Now my advice if you're worried about coil wine is to buy either from Dell directly or a reseller with a really good return policy. Like Amazon, for example, uh, they are generally pretty good with returns. And if you do end up having any issues with coil wine, uh, just return it and get a replacement. Now, one thing I thought I'd also mention is that the stand is super wobbly. Seriously, one of the worst I've ever used. I don't understand why, because all the other ultra sharp monitors from Dell that I've used over the last few years have all had pretty solid stands. Now I did notice this during my initial review, but I just chalked it up to a loose screw I needed to tighten, or maybe just my particular stand was worse than others. Uh, but no, after my review, a couple of people commented that their stand was also quite wobbly. So I tried to take mine apart and either tighten or fix it up, but yeah, still wobbly. Now to me, it was only mildly annoying in some situations. So for example, I have a standing desk uh, and when the desk is in standing mode, it's a little less stable. Uh, so when I'm typing or moving my hands on the desk, it can occasionally cause some very slight wobble on the monitor. This can of course be completely solved by using a monitor arm. Uh, I'm using this one from a company called Ergotron. Highly recommended, uh, this is not sponsored either. I bought it with my own money. Uh, the monitor has a Visa mount at the back and it takes about two minutes to mount it. Now, speaking of solving issues, throughout this video, you may have seen me doing some training on the U2725QE. And if you ever wanted to learn hacking or break into cybersecurity, you can do it using Try Hack Me. It's a gamified, hands-on cybersecurity training platform used by over 5 million people globally. And big thanks to Try Hack Me for supporting my work on this channel and sponsoring this section of the video. Now, cybersecurity jobs are exploding right now, but to break into the industry and be a competitive candidate, you obviously need experience and knowledge. 
TriHackMe users are getting real certifications like security analyst level one or penetration tester and landing real jobs. TriHackMe makes this easy and fun by offering real world hands-on technical training where you can learn how to ethically hack machines and investigate real world attacks, covering both offensive and defensive cyber. There's no need for any special software or programs either. Everything is directly accessible in your browser. So use the link in the description to start learning cybersecurity and use code tech to get a 25% discount. So in my full review, I talked about the Thunderbolt 4 hub connectivity and that there was a single Thunderbolt 4 downstream port. Now this allowed me to attach a Thunderbolt capable external SSD and actually get close to full Thunderbolt speeds with the caveat being that the write speed is about 30% slower than usual. Now I spent some time trying to push the limits of this port to see what I could get it to do. And unfortunately it wasn't much. Now first I tried to see if I could expand the connectivity with a powered Thunderbolt 4 hub. Uh, I have a CalDigit dock which has its own separate power supply. But when attaching this to the monitor via that Thunderbolt 4 downstream port uh, and then attaching a USB device to the CalDigit the monitor did not recognize it at all. Same with a simpler Thunderbolt 4 hub I have from Pluggable. Now I did manage to get a USB-C dongle hub working, but only for extremely low power draw accessories like a USB-A mouse dongle, which isn't really that groundbreaking because all the other USB ports can do that. Anything that required more power than say that little USB dongle, like an external SSD just would not work. So it seems that you really can't expand upon the existing ports on the monitor. Uh, if those existing ports are enough for you, great. But if you need more, uh, you'll have to attach your computer to a proper desktop dock uh, and then output an image from that dock to the Dell monitor, which kind of defeats the purpose of buying a monitor with a built-in USB-C hub. But you know, just really depends on your exact use case though. Now in my full review, I compared the Dell U2725QE to a number of other monitors in the premium price category of about 650 plus US dollars. Now I wanted to slightly expand on this and talk about two additional monitors that I think are notable mentions. Firstly, there's the Dell S2725QC. Now it's essentially a budget version of the U2725QE. Uh, coming in at about half the price. Now it has the same 27 inch 4K 120 Hertz panel, uh, but with a reduced contrast ratio of 1500 to one instead of 3000 to one. So colors and dark scenes won't be quite as good as the more expensive U2725QE. Uh, it's also slightly less color accurate and drops the built-in Thunderbolt 4 hub in favor of a much simpler version. The one cable laptop connectivity is still there providing up to 65 watts of power delivery, uh, but then you only get HDMI and a couple of basic ports on top of that. So this would be a great option if you don't need all the bells and whistles of the U2725QE, but still want to get, you know, 70 to 80% of the functionality and the features. Now, if you want to completely drop the USB-C functionality and save 50 bucks, uh, there's the S2725QS as well, which would be a great and affordable 4K 120 Hertz option for those with desktop Macs, like the Mac mini or studio. Now, if you're more of a gamer and have a dual Mac and PC setup like me though, uh, you'll be much better off with a proper gaming monitor. Now, I've just received the new Ultra Gear 32GX870A from LG. Uh, it has one cable laptop connectivity, 4K resolution, insane 240 hertz refresh rate with dual mode. And I'm currently working on my review of it. Specifically, uh, you know, how the experience is with my dual Mac and PC setup and how it fares as a dual productivity and gaming option. If you want to see that review, hit that subscribe button below to get notified when I upload it.